Have you ever wondered how professional horticulturists deal with insect pests? We don't reach straight for those pesticides like some of the home gardeners do, and maybe your neighbours are doing that, but that's actually not how a good professional horticulturist will deal with an insect pest. In fact, it's one of the last methods that we look at in an integrated pest management scheme. Integrated pest management is a fancy buzz term for just basically an intelligent approach to pest control. One of the best methods of integrated pest management is biological controls, which is a fancy way of saying introducing predatory organisms into your growing environment. Usually when we're talking about biological controls, we'll be talking about stuff like insects and insect-like organisms, such as spiders, but not all of our biological controls are insects. So we've got stuff like birds, mammals, frogs, We've got even bacteria sometimes can be awesome at controlling our insect pests. This video though is really going to be focused around those insect predatory organisms because we can actually get really good bang for buck in terms of introducing those into our garden and they're actually going to make a huge difference for our insect pests so that we can reach for those chemical pesticides as a real last resort because we don't want to be reaching straight for them at the start. That's not the way that professionals deal with our insect pests. So the first thing we're going to need to understand is that insect pests actually have a really important role to play in our gardens. So they actually form the bottom of the food chain and without them everything that we're going to be talking about here today is really void. So a lot of people are going to reach straight for the chemicals, they're going to spray their plants. What's going to happen is that's going to kill the pests, it's also going to kill the things that feed on the pests. And it's also going to get rid of that food source that those things that feed on the pests really need to stay in an environment. So it's basically like signing yourself up to continuously needing to use those pesticides. The way that I'm going to be talking about today, we're going to be relying less on chemicals because we're going to be encouraging those predatory insects to stick around in the garden and basically take a huge chunk out of those pests so that we have to do less. So the way it works in nature is that plants form the bottom layer of the food chain. Now what we call pests are just herbivorous insects and also sometimes mammals but really we're focusing on insects. They're going to eat those plants especially when they are weakened. So if we've got an unhealthy plant, they're going to be attracting more insects. They're going to be less resilient against them. So healthy plants actually repel pests a lot more because they have more resources at their defense that they can sort of bring in and discourage those insects. That's quite complicated, so we're going to save that for another lesson. But in this video, we're really going to be focusing on that second layer and the third layer of the food chain. So the pests eat the plants and then the predatory insects will eat those pests. So except for a very small number of poisonous spiders, most of those predatory insects are very safe for humans, even if they got scary turns on them like parasitoid wasps. Now that sounds like a very scary term, but don't be scared of it because what we're talking about is basically a nightmare for those pests. They're actually very healthy for our gardens. Now biological controls aren't usually a quick fix. If you're really looking for a quick fix, a lot of the time really you're going to be reaching straight for that white oil. So you're just going to knock a population pest on the head with a quick spray of white oil. When I say white oil, really I'm talking about what they call horticultural oil. You can even mix some for yourself just with some vegetable oil some detergent or soap and a lot of water. That's a quick way to knock a population on the head. You can also just spray it with a jet of water from the hose. That can knock some pests off. What we're talking about here today is a long-term solution or at least a long-term strategy for keeping populations down. Because remember that a healthy garden actually has a pest population as part of it. It's just that it doesn't get out of hand and out of balance. So let's go through some of the most popular predatory insects in Australia. First of all, we've got ladybugs. They're probably the most charismatic predatory insects in the garden. Both the adult form and the larval form are going to decimate pest populations, particularly when we're talking about stuff like aphids, scale, and a bunch of different stuff. Lacewings, again, both the larvae and the adults of lacewings feed on a variety of small insect pests. Predatory mites, now these guys are really useful in controlling spider mite pests and other pest populations. Then we can move on to stuff like hoverflies. Hoverflies are actually a type of fly. They can look like bees or wasps. They've got a similar sort of pattern. But these ones are really amazing because they're one of the only insects that can actually fly backwards. So it's pretty much just them and dragonflies that can do that. And they're one of my personal favorites. I love seeing these guys in the garden. So hoverflies and parasitoid wasps actually share a bit of a, a strategy in terms of the adult life forms are going to suck nectar out of tiny little flowers. So we're talking about stuff like aster family flowers, stuff like chrysanthemums, daisies, and also other little flowers, especially alyssum. Alyssum is really great 
if you've got some of those yellow buttons awesome plants for attracting hoverflies and parasitoid wasps callistamins grevilleas anything with those small flowers for small mouth parts of insects is really going to be beneficial for these particular types of insects the adult life forms will suck the nectar out of those flowers and then they're going to lay an egg in the head or the body of insect pests so this is where it gets really brutal so their larvae will hatch within those pests and they're going to eat them from the inside then they'll emerge out and sort of start the next life phase so they'll become an adult look for some nectar for a bit of energy and then they they're going to mate and then the mothers are going to lay eggs and new pests really great insects to have around and anytime you see a hoverfly and you're probably not going to see the the parasitoid wasps they're called micro wasps for a reason they're tiny but you will see those hoverflies around and a good garden has plenty of them around. So make sure you keep an eye out for them and look after them. So these sorts of insects, they actually fly long distances. They love a little bit of water as well. So if you can leave some dishes of water out, just check it for mosquito larvae, maybe empty it out every couple of days. So they're gonna need some small flowers, some water and some pest populations for them to lay their eggs in for the next generation. These insects are quite short lived, remember. Now spiders. I know that everybody doesn't love to see spiders in their garden. Some people think that the webs are ugly or, you know, they just are afraid of spiders because there's, we all know that spiders can be dangerous, especially in Australia. But the number of spiders that are actually dangerous is tiny in comparison to the ones that are really beneficial. So there are a bunch of different hunting strategies that spiders employ. So some of them will have a web some of them will be, uh, you know, they'll be predatory in terms of they will actually physically hunt and stalk prey. So when we're talking about jumping spiders, this is what we're talking about. These guys will run around and actually find a pest, jump on them, eat them. So they're not only just going to eat pests. These spiders will also eat what we call beneficial insects. And that's all part of that food web. A healthy garden has all of these sorts of relationships going on and we really want to encourage all of them. So if we want to encourage these beneficial insects to colonize our gardens naturally, we're going to want to create a favorable environment for them. So that's going to involve doing things like dense planting, giving them plenty of places to hide, different shapes and heights of plants, lots of flowering plants, especially stuff with small flowers like those calistamins, grevilleas, aster family flowers, chrysanthemums and yellow buttons. Alyssum is awesome. Westringia is another beautiful plant for our predatory insects like hoverflies and parasitoid wasps. Now this is great but this takes time to achieve this in the garden. You don't just plant a flowering plant and then they're going to turn up the next day. If you're really looking for a short-term solution instead of using a chemical pesticide what you can do is you can buy beneficial insects from somewhere like Bugs for Bugs. So you're gonna have to start with identifying your particular pest, which is gonna maybe involve taking some photos, doing some Google searches, or reaching out to a professional horticulturist or pest control professional. You can also take a photo of those pests and send them through to someone like Bugs for Bugs, and they're probably gonna be able to help you identify the particular pest. And then they're probably gonna help you with the next phase as well, which is to identify the particular predator or predators that are gonna eat that pest. Maybe it's a particular type of wasp. Maybe it's a particular type of arachnid like a spider or a predatory mite or maybe it's even something like a bacteria or maybe it's even something like a nematode. Either way you need to identify the particular predator that you need then buy it and look at the label before you release those predators. So it'll take a little while for them to come in the mail and then you're going to want to read the instructions. So maybe they need to be released at night or dusk or even early in the morning because remember that different organisms have different habits so releasing them at the wrong time on the wrong plant in the wrong conditions you know heat cool they're not gonna last so make sure you get that right if you have a healthy garden you actually don't need to buy predators because they're already going to be there present if you don't have any predatory insects that's a sign you need to up your game in terms of plant selection and your gardening practices so there you have it there's an introduction to biological controls which is just the fancy industry way of saying introducing predators into your growing environment for more tips like this follow osbreed on youtube on instagram on tiktok and on facebook <laughs>